Setting up acoustics in your new podcasting studio is only a first step. And in this video, I want to show you how SonarWorks measurement can help you to calibrate your system. I'm Mike from Casefile and Casefile Presents. And on this channel, we're releasing videos on podcasting, audio production, what's like to be a podcast producer. So if you enjoy the content, hit subscribe and notification. I've recently moved to a new house and I want to set up one of the rooms as my podcast production studio. I've ordered acoustics from GIK Acoustics, but before setting them up, I wanted to measure the room to see what the underlining problems are and then measure it after all the panels are on walls and ceilings and whatnot and see what was solved and what is still there. Now, in the past, I had one of them Behringer measurement microphones, so I knew they work quite well. I was looking on online for one of them and then I stumbled upon a different microphone called Sonarworks uh, XREF20. Now they look exactly the same as the Behringer ones but they come with their own calibration profile which then works with Sonarworks software that helps you to calibrate an entire system. And I'm making other videos about that but in this particular video, I want to focus only on the measurement aspect of a Sonarworks software. Okay, let's have a look at the box first. As you can see, I only ordered the microphone first and it costs like 50 pounds and it comes with a trial version of the software. I wanted to test it out first before buying it. The box looks sturdy enough and the delivery was super quick. What's a bit disappointing is that there is no clip for the stand. Well, it's disappointing at first because I'll explain why it's not that bad in just a second. The microphone has the calibration profile on its side and you know it's a measurement microphone, so you know, it's not that exciting. Before we jump and have the actual software, I want to clarify the uh, clip issue. So in the past, how the studio measurements were done was that you had the microphone, you set it up on a stand in your listening position, you know, like pointing in between the uh, speakers. And then you run the sine waves, the clicking and whatever. Now, what took me by surprise is that Sonarworks does it a little bit different. And you can see it in my other video, but you actually hold the microphone and then you move around the room as it points you uh, to sort of different points and uh, makes measurement like that. So it's very clever. At first, I've actually set it up because I had one of them clips. So I set it up on a stand and then I quickly had to take it out. It was actually quite funny, but that's another video. Let's now have a look at the actual software. Okay, so I wanna show you how the measurement software from Sonarworks work. It's pretty weird because I will be recording into this microphone. I only have one input on my ID for audio interface and I need to have uh, the measurement mic connected in order to show you how the software works. So let's get into it. We need to open the uh, system-wide software and then in calibration profile we select measure speakers Sonarworks reference for measure loads up and we measure our speakers and we have few options to select one is phantom power that needs to be on this is a condenser microphone and obviously it is on because I am speaking to it uh, microphone input is not routed directly into your speaker outputs That's correct single audio interface is used for mic input and output to speakers that's also set and the sample rate needs to be set to 44.1 that's fine and it will take around 20 minutes to measure the whole setup so i'm not going to do it here but i just want to show you how the software works and then we'll jump to the actual results that I got uh, when I was measuring. Here we put the microphone ID, it's the one at the side of the microphone I showed you earlier. You can use that, a different microphone as well, obviously it's recommended to use theirs and with their calibration profile. That's the microphone frequency response curve of that microphone. So we click next. And it's recommended to use a single audio device for microphone input and speaker output. And then we measure uh, the microphone input channel that's here. That's 
fine. And we can also measure the uh, test track. Please adjust the volume of your output device. My voice should sound at normal conversation volume. And that's fine. So that's for sort of input and output. And we click next. There we adjust the microphone input gain. So that's where, you know, sine waves and all these little clicks need to be audible enough for the microphone to pick it up and create the profile. Okay, next. So we can play the signals. It's like sine waves and clicks and so on. Um, that's it shows you how to position the microphone correctly. So you're aiming in between of the speakers, sort of ear level, and you've got to uh, hold the microphone away from your body. I'm not gonna do that, so I'm comfortable sitting. I don't wanna get up. And here we are adjusting the input on the microphone. So the input that I got on my audio interface. So we can start measuring. So as you can see, I had to sort of adjust the gain a little bit and then it tested a little bit more. Now we have to determine the distance between the speakers. So the software is really clever and it will adjust for small differences in the speaker positions. And again, we've got to sort of hold it to the main driver of the speaker, uh, one to two centimeters away from our body. Or you can switch to Imperial if you're, you know, not 0.4 to not 0.8 inches. Obviously, I'm using metric. Um, and we can start measure again quickly. So I'm just doing it to show you. Stay where you are. Measurements in progress. Left speaker done. Left speaker done. Let's jump to the right speaker. Stay where you are. Measurements in progress. Right speaker done. Right speaker done. We got our sort of set of dimensions. You can adjust it if you want. Also, it looks good. And we locate your listening spot, my listening spot. And then again, I've got to sort of keep it here, away from my body, etc. But I'm just going to do it like that. That's done. You know, it shows you all these dimensions. Again, you can check in your imperial or metric. And uh, what I've done when I was measuring, I then sort of used the tape measure and I've adjusted. So it wasn't showing it exactly on point. So I recommend doing that as well and adjust it a little bit more. Now it looks good and we can start the measurement. So, you know, this is all based on the measurements we've done and it will be about 40, I think it's 38 or 40 spots that I'm go around the room and I keep the microphone, um, you know, sort of changing the position when the speakers will play the sine waves and the clicks uh, to measure the room. Obviously, I'm not gonna take you through all that. I'll show you a couple and then we'll go to the results that I've had before. Again, you've got a tutorial how to position it correctly etc. So it's important to read that, uh, read through that. I remember, move to the next location and then stop staying in the position with that green sort of hand signal. 
um, and we can start measuring. So we start measuring from the center position. I'll run through a couple of them and then uh, we'll switch it off. As you can see, the microphone is moving on the screen as well. Okay, let's pause it. So as you can see, the microphone is moving as I'm moving it um, with my hand. And so we've got, what, like 37 spots in total. So we walk around the room, measuring the room, it takes about 10, 15 minutes or so, and at the end you get the results. So let's jump to the results I had um, when I was doing the measurements of this room. Okay, so that's the results I got when I've done the measurements of my room. And that's the frequency response curve. As you can see, we can select left, or right channels. It's really clever that it shows you both. The room, even though it's acoustically treated, it's got its own issues. So there's a huge buildup down the low end. Then um, we got a few dips as well, 1K and then a slope in higher frequencies. That's because this room is tiny. Low frequencies are the longest, they're omnidirectional and they usually stay. Even though I have bass traps around me, that's not enough to keep it under control. It is tamed a little bit. I did measure it without the acoustics before, and the acoustics helps, but obviously not enough. That's why I'm using reference for software to correct these mistakes, but I've talked about it in the other videos. In this one, I really wanted to focus about the measurement aspect of sonar work. Um, and just a quick word on the educational license I'm using for the purpose of this video. It's the one I bought for my youngest brother. I want to get him into audio production. And if you can, if you're studying or uh, teaching, you can get up to 50% off Sonarworks reference software if you uh, verify with them. They'll send you the code. I don't know if you can get the microphone by itself on the discount. I bought it from this website, Music Matter. And again, it was only the mic I got. So I've got the license for the software afterwards, as I wanted to try out first. And it was 59 pounds. It looks like it's out of stock now, but I'm sure you can find it on some other website. But yeah, that's it. That's how the software looks. So is the microphone worth it? Well, if you're thinking about buying the Sonarworks reference for software, then yes. Because not only you get to measure the room, but because the microphone it comes with their its own calibration profile, the software will help you to sort out the issues that are still there. On the other hand, if you just wanna measure the room and then sort out the issues yourself, like adding panels or uh, whatever, then just buy Behringer and use REW, which is Room EQ Wizard. It's a free acoustic measurement software online. For podcast producers who are working in a small compromised room like myself, I suggest trying out Sonarworks Reference 4 and I'm making another couple of videos on it. Because even though I've treated that room acoustically, there are still issues and I cannot help uh, and cannot solve them with adding more panels because I don't have more, any more space. And Sonarworks, where it comes in, it solves this issue and it's an amazing addition to my studio. But that's it for today. I'm Mike Migis. Thanks again for watching. If you wanna learn more about podcasting, check the rest of my channel or my website, mikemigis.com. For now, share, like, subscribe, and I'll see you later.